America needs a tidal wave of the old time religion. I have sinned against you. How dare you! We have no need to doubt God. The heart of Babylon is preparing the nations to receive the Antichrist. I didn't even build that house with money from the church. I built it with money from my book. I don't make this stuff up. Repenting of your sin. It is a moral issue. They got together and swore a pact to the devil. I just enjoy seeing people worship, <sighs> praising God. Happy Halloween! Happy. And welcome to Believe It or Not, the podcast where belief, belief, belief it. Oh no! Oh not! <laughs> hey, Damien, how you doing? Good, good. I heard a joke the other day. Why don't monsters eat ghosts? I do not know because they taste like sheet. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, um, I was uh, we were playing. Like, mm-hmm. me and my brothers playing pretend. Whoa. And I put a sheet over me, and I'm like, I'm a ghost. Mm-hmm. And my brother's like, ghosts don't look like that. And I'm like, I was a child who suffocated in his bed and <laughs> died in his bed sheets. And you just hear my mom from the other room, Trevor, that's disgusting. <laughs> it happens. It happens. I was more concerned about safety and warning my siblings. Not yeah, to- don't. Get suffocated in your rubber sheets. Yeah, <laughs> I guess if you have rubber sheets because you wet the bed, it would it would happen. Yeah, but if it you have happen. regular cotton sheets that breathe, you'd probably be fine. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. I don't know. Who knows? Disclaimer: I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Damien, have you ever been part of an exorcism? Not yet. Mm. Have you? Yes. Yeah, really? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Multiple. Wow. Um, How do you get in on that? Well, you go to a, a church that's insane. Mm. So we went to this little like cult church in okay. Alberta for a little while, mm-hmm. and they were a lot. And the pastor was a grifter, and a, um, so I think he had a couple people who would come in to pretend to be. Uh, demon possessed and mm-hmm. also you can convince people that they're demon possessed and also so we were in a youth group with this kid who was like just a hyper ADHD kid uh, he had 12 siblings yeah and he was starving too, for attention too many siblings yeah uh, his parents were um wait a minute is this just the plot of home alone yeah yeah <laughs> His parents were Hutterite, and then they left the Hutterite church to join this new cult. But so this kid, he was definitely star for attention um, and decided when we were at the beach that he was demon-possessed okay. and went uh, and did all the, I'm a mm-hmm. demon or whatever. So, you know, all the youth group kids who believed in that we were blessed by the Holy Spirit started praying over him. And we, um, my sibling, so my sibling went, because uh, it was pre-cell phone days, like there were cell phones, but not as Yeah, often. not everybody had them. So went into a local like ice cream shop by the beach and said, asked if they could use their phone and um, called our, called my dad who called the pastor. And uh, so while we were praying there, my dad and the pastor were getting ready to come over. And my sibling goes, are you Christians? To the people like working at the ice cream place. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. And my sibling's like, start praying because there's a, a demon-possessed boy out there. And they're like, uh, well, we don't really believe in it that way. <laughs> uh, Whether you believe it or not, it's happening. Um, it wasn't. He was just... I mean, it's, it's so wild to me that people would believe that. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things, like, the first thing I'm going to think, especially if it's a kid, is, like, they're faking it. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. This is just made up. Oh, yeah. And uh, (sighs) there was also many times where we would pray out the demons from our house because my sibling had night terrors, so that was believed to be because of demons. Yeah, yeah, So we had many times of that. Uh, So (laughs) Night terrors is such a funny thing that I just remember hearing about when I was younger and yeah. you don't think anything of it, but you're like, 
You have this thing called night terror. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> and we had carbon monoxide oh. leaking in our house, but okay. we thought we were all seeing angels. Yeah. Like, I'm glad we got out of there, but, like, we could have been hurt. <laughs> you could have died. Yeah, we could have died. But instead, we thought we were all seeing angels. Wow. Yeah. But, um... But there was a whole Simpsons episode where that happened, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, there was. There was like a gas leak, and everyone yeah. thought they were seeing angels, but yeah. they were just hallucinating. Yeah, at wow. the amusement park. Wow. <laughs> where they had uh, Noah's Ark, jelly beans. And that's the thing. That's another thing against haunted houses and old buildings. Yeah. It's just poor circulation <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and drafty houses. Yep. <laughs> so you're either here in wind or you're getting carbon monoxide poisoning. Yep. Amongst other things. Amongst other things. Amongst. <laughs> So let's talk about a few famous um, exorcisms. Mm. We won't go too much into debunking them. Just know that we don't believe everything we hear. No. So, I mean, obviously, we'll... we'll, Yeah, anyways. Uh, So, 1578, Martha Brosier, she was a lady who um, was made infamous around that year for uh, her feigned demonic possessions discovered through exorcism proceedings. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so this one was proven to be not real when they were exorcising? Yeah. So now I have to ask, did they prove that she was faking it because she said she was faking it later or was it that they were not that nothing they were doing was doing anything good so they're like if eh, she's faking it yeah probably <laughs> you know what i mean so it's probably just like mental, mental yeah. Health yeah, health she's stuff. faking it yeah yeah Let's see maladies uh from which she said to her suffer include extreme shortness of breath and an ability to stick at her tongue unreasonably <laughs> far uh the gnashing of her teeth uh, she would writhe and move her mouth as if she had convulsions while contorting her face, rolling her eyes, and appearing to show deep uh, vexation and torment. So maybe she was having convulsions. Yeah. she. A lot of times, I mean, there's like some people fake it, uh, mm-hmm. but there's also a lot of times um, epilepsy was considered yeah. demon possession. Well, that's what I got to wonder because this is 17, 1578. Yeah. They don't know shit. They don't know shit. Well, they say like most of the stuff in the Bible that's called demon possession was epilepsy. Mm. Um, there was a girl at my church when I was growing up. She was like a young teenager mm-hmm. at the time. And I don't know what she had, but she like she was in a wheelchair. She had seizures a lot and she yelled out a lot. Yeah. And I asked once, what's what's wrong with her? And because I was really young, and my dad goes, Oh, it's a demon. What? She's demon possessed. And everybody in the church just like that's what she that's what was wrong with her was she's demon possessed. What the fuck? Yeah. In okay. the twentieth century this happened. <laughs> so Wow. Yep. Wow. And they just okay. always had prayer meetings over her and, and stuff like that. The parents were just convinced it was demons and that was that. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying it's right, but I can understand like when you're in a situation like that to rationalize things, Mm -hmm. you might, you might fall back on something like that, like a situation that's not great. Yeah. Maybe there (laughs) was no treatment. Like it feels like that's just a way of, of coping with uh, trauma and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, it can't be healthy for you in the long run. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's healthy. No, but I, I can under, I can kind of understand. Yeah, the desire. Yeah, and it's like with healing stuff too. Like yeah. with my dad, like nothing worked. Like no medical stuff mm-hmm. worked for him, so it made sense that he try alternative try alternatives. Sure, and, yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was also Mademoiselle Elizabeth de Lorraine Fang. Ren Fang. Ran Fang. Uh, she became a widow in 1617 and was later sought out in marriage by a physician and then later burned after a judicial sentence for being a practicing magician. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was just doing card tricks. And they're like, <laughs> kill burn her. her. Kill her. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's funnier than saying that she was 
burn for being a, a witch, but yeah. saying that a practicing magician just yeah. is so funny. <laughs> yeah. She, she took a hanky out of her sleeve. <laughs> like, burn her. Abracadabra. <laughs> just shot her. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Ah. Uh, yeah, so the exorcism started in 1619, and then um, so they say that he gave her love potions after she rejected her, after she rejected him, and that's what caused the demon possession was the love potions. Wait, so she was a magician, but he was the one using magic love potions. I guess so. So why wasn't he burned? Because he, because <laughs> she was a woman. A Boy, witch? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, she was further also purported to describe in detail the use of various language, uh, the rites and secrets of the church to experts in the language she spoke. Uh, there was even a mention of how the demon in- interpreted an exorcist, an exorcist who, after making a mistake in his recital of the exorcism rite in Latin, corrected his speech and mocked him. So it just sounds like she knew a few languages. Yeah. And was fucking with people. Or the priest was like making it all up. Yeah, he couldn't speak anything and she was just speaking gibberish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that too. It's one of the two. Well, it's like um we did the episode a long time ago about uh um Azusa Street. Mm-hmm. And I was going to include a Vuzula Street, yeah, Vuzula Street. But we, uh, I was going to include a little section of it in a recent video I did, and then ended up cutting it. So I did. I went back and watched some of the videos. But like, they say, like, if you look at earlier stuff, it's like people were speaking in strange languages, and Mm -hmm. then as you get like decades later, they're like they speak in strange languages, and people there understood what they were saying. It's like, well, that's added later. That under they understood what they're yeah. saying. That's added later in the narrative. That didn't actually yeah. happen at the time. You can like kind of see how um legends evolve over time. One of those things when they say they spoke in different languages and people understood it, it just makes me think of were they just speaking in the, the normal language? Yeah, <laughs> you just they said just they like... were speaking different languages. Yeah, I understand this now. <gasps> Maybe they're just speaking in English or whatever yeah. the hell they were speaking before. Oh, that person's speaking Spanish. Yeah, they're Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I more meant like they're but... speaking in English, but you're like, oh, they're speaking in yeah. Hebrew, and I can understand it now. It's like, no, they're still speaking English. Yeah. Just with a weird accent. <laughs> I knew a guy who swore that he thought everybody in the world knew English mm. and thought in English, <clears throat> but had to translate everything they said yeah. into the, their language. Because, wow. yeah, he was an I idiot. think that's why I'm so bad with learning languages, because I, I just I have a hard time doing that yeah exactly well you know the default language yeah i know the default i know yeah. the, the one true language yeah that god intended us all exactly because <laughs> he wrote the bible in english right he did yeah yeah in sixteen nine. and god is a man yeah yeah uh george Lukens, <laughs> uh in 1778 said to have seven demons and they needed seven clergymen in order to get these seven demons out of this man Miss Barber, who formerly resided in Yatan, attested to the clergyman that Lookins had an extraordinary good character and attended services of worship where he received the church sacraments. However, for the past 18 years, he had been subject to, tip- to atypical fits, which Luckins believed resulted from a supernatural slap, which knocked him down while he was acting in a Christmas pageant. <laughs> he had a head injury. <laughs> Lukens was consequently taken under the care of Dr. Smith, an eminent surgeon, um, among many other physicians who in vain tried to help George Luckens. Yeah, so then they had an exorcism. And... Um, yeah, so... I like the seven demons and seven clergymen because yeah. it feels like... I read a lot of like, like shonen manga and that's kind of what it feels like. You know, it's like a seven on seven battle and everyone has to take one in order to defeat the big boss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to free your friend. And if you don't by sundown, then everyone dies. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of like, they're just trying to pad out the runtime here. It feels like Yeah. people were taking a lot of chemicals and stuff during this time too. That Ooh. like, isn't safe for you. Right. Like, <laughs> and like you get into the 1900s Asbestos. and everybody has lead. Yeah. And, lead. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was always a thing, right? Yeah. Exactly. And like, what was it? Um, 
uh, Abraham Lincoln's fits were because of lip lithium. Mm. But yeah, uh, jo- Johann Blumhart um, performed the exorcism of Gott. Got Lieben Dittus and uh, I got Lieben Dittus the other day. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I got a cream for it. <laughs> From uh, 1842 don't. to 1844, Blumhart's parish subsequently experienced growth marked by confessions and healing, which he attributed to a successful exorcism. He had a good marketing campaign. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> Clara Germana Sally, 1906, South Afri- African school girl who claimed to be possessed at St. Michael's Mission in South Africa. The girl was an orphan of, an Afri- of African origin and was baptized as an infant. At the age of 16, the girl allegedly made a pact with Satan, and this is said to be the cause of her demonic possession. Oh, nice. so this isn't that. Yeah. Uh, Clara later revealed this information to her confessor, uh, Father Homer Erasmus. In an account which written by a nun. Anyways, um, they said no animal had ever made such sounds, neither the lions of East Africa or the angry bulls. At times it sounded like a veritable herd of wild beasts orchestrated by Satan had formed a hellish choir uh, attending nun of St. Michael's mission. Ay, ay, ay. I don't know. You ever heard babies and children? Yeah, exactly. They're wild sounding sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And it can't couldn't have been easy for somebody growing up in that orphanages can be terrifying and awful and scary places to be, and uh, and then you're surrounded by Catholic priests and nuns. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna act out a little bit. So they say the uh, art expert. Armando Genesi said that Salvador Dali, Dali received an exorcism. That just feels like something Dali wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So the one of the most famous exorcisms. It's the one that caused the book that inspired the book, The Exorcist, and it inspired which inspired the movie, The Exorcist, and which inspired modern day exorcisms to become what they are today. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And uh, so that was a kid named, where was that? Robbie Mannheim. Robbie Mannheim or Robbie Rowe, I think is the other name. Um, Robbie Mannheim. Uh, so Roland Doe was the other name he went by. That was a pseudonym. So these are both pseudonyms. Oh, okay. 14 year old boy who was alleged victim of demon possession and the events were recorded by the attending priest. Um, and then, yeah, it inspired the the old the movie uh, in the 1940s uh, the united states priests the roman catholic church performed a series of exorcism on an anonymous boy documented under the pseudonym roland Dahl. the 14 year old boy was allegedly the victim of demon possessions and the events were recorded by the attending pre- it's just repeating itself um yeah so you gotta pad out the article yeah it's true <laughs> okay cool so just some boy who apparently had an exorcism yeah and then in 1974, Michael Taylor was a famous one because after the exorcism, he murdered his wife. And then he was able to not do too much prison time because he pled, pled insanity and he got off on insanity. It sounds like if you're going to murder your wife, you should do it before the exorcism. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pro tip there, boys. Pro tip. Because, yeah, after the exorcism, and ladies. it's supposed to be gone. Uh, Mother Teresa was supposed to have had an exorcism because Mother Teresa was also a huge piece of shit. Yep. Uh, Bobby Jindal, the former governor of Louisiana, said that he uh, personally experienced a, an exorcism. Uh, performing, performing an exorcism on an intimate friend named Susan while in college. Oh of course, God. this sounds, who hasn't done an exorcism in college? This sounds like it was something very inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> and he's yep. just covering it by saying it was an exorcism. Mm-hmm. That's what this feels like. Yep. Uh, more recently, Nancy Pelosi did an exorcism of her house after her husband was attacked. <laughs> okay. So this was confirmed I feel like by that's Snopes. Like, a, like something that some 
just older ladies do. Yeah, it is. Like they'll or they'll sage their houses and stuff like that. Too. Yeah, when when I was Crystals. a kid, anytime somebody in our church bought a new house, you would just get a group of people to go through and pray pray in every room. Yeah. Pray for the spirits to right. leave and to God for God to come into it. I feel like that's always the question: is like, would you move into the house if you knew someone died there? I'm like, someone's probably died in a lot of houses. Yeah, that you don't know. Yeah, I'm sure if ghosts were real, that uh, oh, especially in the city. Yeah, I say that all the time. Like, we should be seeing ghosts left, right, and yeah. Center. Well, look at this building. There's thousands of people who live in this building, probably oh, hundreds yeah. at least. Guaranteed, a few yeah. people have died here. Yeah, there's no way. Um, but do you want to talk about how to do an exorcism? Yes. Step one. Step one, identify the system. Symptoms. So, symptoms. I can't read. You know I can't read. <laughs> identify the symptoms. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to you. Can, you. <laughs> thank you. Before you get started, you need to verify that you are dealing with a possessed person. Uh, urinating, vomiting, and undecipherable speech. Everybody urinates. It sounds like someone who's drunk. Yeah. <laughs> What are you talking about? I'm fine. <laughs> they don't necessarily mean you are in the presence of a demon. However. Yeah. Look for dramatic signs such as speaking in tongues, levitating, and inhuman strength. But don't... So wait, why would you look for that? Don't some Christians want to speak in tongues? Yeah. Exactly, but maybe if you're speaking in tongues, but like not the uh, right kind like of in tongues, that, in, in a in an evil sounding voice. Oh, so it's just the tone that makes yeah. the difference. I think the only way to know for sure that somebody's demon possessed is if they say your mother sucks cocks in hell. Oh, uh, but yeah. that's not in tongues. No, that's true. That's speaking in getting some tongue around that dick. Yeah, exactly. Z- um, <laughs> levitating would be one. Yeah. I think that would I'd be kind of like, no, oh, something's up here. Something's up here, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it has to be demon possession. I no, think I don't in, think uh... it's going to happen. Well, maybe it's Chris Angel. That's always our friend's question about, like, what would you do if this levitation happened? Oh, yeah. And it's like, well, it's not going to. I know. I know. I <laughs> I have a hard time answering those kind of yeah. what-ifs because I'm like, well, I know it's not going to. And they're like, yeah, yeah but what if it did? And I'm like, well, it wouldn't, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> but if for whatever reason it did, I would probably think that I was asleep. Yeah, exactly. Or something of that kind yeah. of thing. I had it once where... Uh, what is it called? It's like a night terror, but like where you're awake, but you're still dreaming. Like, like a it, sleep paralysis kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. And it was like, so this demon came out of me, mm-hmm. but it was like a long tube demon. Oh, like a wacky, wavily, inflatable yeah, man? Yeah, basically with like a big round gray head with giant sharp teeth. And then it like l- got right into my face and then disappeared. Like Jaws 3D. Yeah, like Jaws 3D. Wow. And I was still very much a Christian at the time and... L- Thought for sure I had just seen a demon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had uh, sleep paralysis, uh, I think probably like the first time that I really remember it, uh, like a couple months ago. Oh, really? Yeah. But for me, it wasn't It wasn't a demon. It was more, like, it was like a cat. <laughs> was it just butthole? No, I wasn't, I wasn't at Cassie's. Oh, okay. But I woke up and I was like awake and conscious and it felt like there was a cat walking on the bed on the covers. Yeah. And then I felt like it sat down beside me, and then there was just like an uneasiness. Like oh, it's okay. there, and there's something's weird about it, and there's nothing I can do about it. But I was also very conscious, like, oh, I'm, I'm. This is sleep paralysis. Yeah. Like I knew what it was. Yeah. And I still like woke up, and I felt like, like, oh, that was freaky. But I knew what it was. Yeah. I just think it was funny that <laughs> for me, <laughs> for me, it was a cat. <laughs> and as you say that, Jagger comes out of hiding. Oh, hello, Jagger, sleepy boy. You've. Uh, I step two. Him. Oh, sorry. I summoned you him. You summoned him. You did. Hey, buddy. Uh, step two: purchase religious paraphernalia. <laughs> <laughs> what if you already have it? That's I true. I like it says stock up on. Yeah, stock up on crucifixes, rosaries, and holy water. These sacred items are vital in casting out the demon and yeah. should be placed on the head and breast of the possessed. Breast. Uh, you should also try to dress in a robe or some kind of black attire. Why? demons love they, they're afraid of priests because like can you think of one example of a priest ever doing something evil uh well i mean that's why they wear the robes right yeah they can't do it i never wear buttons but i got a cool hat and my homies agree yeah, i really, really look, look good, good in black, black fool <laughs> <laughs> perform the right 
The right is. No, we miss connect to the Holy Spirit. Oh, sorry, connect to the Holy Spirit. Ooh, number three, connect to the Holy Spirit. We don't want to miss that one. No, that's like the most important part. This part is where a strong faith will benefit you. Oh, so if you don't have a strong faith, it's okay. Yeah, but but it's better. It's better to have a strong faith. (laughs) If you have never been religious, grab a Bible and pray that a higher power will come down from the heavens and help you. Send him an MSN messenger. (laughs) Oh, I use AIM. (laughs) You up? You should always repent every sin you have committed, even the little things. Every sin? That'll take too long. (laughs) That'll take way too long. I mean, even if I wanted to, I don't think I could remember everything. No. Well, everything's a sin. Oh, shit. Do you just say, I repent for everything I ever did? Sorry. That's what I was was told was fine. Yeah. How is that fine? And even like... How can you repent for something that you don't remember or know that you did by just... Putting a like a catch all for everything. Yeah, like sorry about this. I'll I'll do better next time. It's like sorry about what? All, All this it. stuff. But like what? Yeah, it depends because I know like I think what you're supposed to do mm-hmm. with Catholics, and it was a little different depending on the Protestant denomination, but um, you're supposed to try to remember everything you've done. So you're supposed to like try your best to remember all your sins and confess those. But then there's also like blanket stuff for like the ones you can't remember. Right. But, uh, yeah, because I was so concerned for a while that I was missing sins and I'd go to hell because I forgot to ask for forgiveness for sins. And my dad's like, no, you can just do a blanket one. Oh, yeah, I told my mom I had uh, two Oreos, but I really had four Oreos. (laughs) Uh... (laughs) I remember once I lied in church and I felt so bad about it. What did you lie about? I said that I sang along to the hymn. But you didn't know the but words? But I didn't know the words. That's and fair. I couldn't read yet. Why did you say you sang along? Because I wanted to look cool. Oh, so no one asked you. you Nobody just... asked me. I just tapped my mom on the shoulder and said, I sang along. And then I felt so bad. Why did you say that? I don't know. And I was like, uh, uh, just going like that. Excuse me. I sang along. <laughs> and they're like, no, you didn't. Yeah, they didn't care. That was good for you. And then you later know, I started cool. crying at home. And I'm like, I didn't actually sing along. I lied in church. Man, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, 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 the performing the right. The right is a five thousand word section of the Roman ritual composed of psalms, gospels, and prayers used to expel demons. Essentially, you have to spend hours commanding the demon to leave the body in the name of the Holy Spirit. This sounds exhausting. Yeah, good thing. Okay, so that's this is the Catholic version. The Protestant version is. You just yell at him a lot. You say the word Jesus a lot. You say, get out, demon, a lot. And you're probably going to try to trick you by being like, please stop. I'm not really possessed. (laughs) And then you have to be like, God, I guess I got to pretend I'm still a demon if I want this guy to stop. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, I'm still here, I guess. Oh, it's really working this time. Have you ever watched like the demon possession videos like on YouTube? No, I have. Delivery services. It's so funny how obviously fake they are. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, it's hilarious. Like they're obviously faking it, uh, but people are so it's because it's so much emotion around it too. Like yeah. you're building it up, and you get. I mean, it. I feel like it's anything like that. You get so worked up in it that you kind of buy into it to a certain yeah. degree. You buy into the theatrics. Yeah, you get caught up in it. Yeah. Uh, rid the devil. After hours or days, the person should be freed. Be careful because demons are tricky and may still be lingering. Say a few extra prayers just in case and double check that none of the material possession in the room are hosting demons either. They could have went into a doll. Right. Annabelle. Um, there's or a an ashtray. Part in the Bible where ashtray. it says that if you expel a demon, but you don't replace it with God, so you make don't make sure that they're, the person is saved. So you have to expel the demon and then you have to walk through the believer's prayer with them. Make sure they what know is that? the Lord. I believe in a thing called love. Yeah, just, <laughs> just listen to the rhythm of my heart. heart. <laughs> uh, and then otherwise it'll come back with seven more demons. Seven more? So the demon will come back and now there's eight. And that's why eight. you need the eight clergymen to come yeah. beat them up. And that was one of the reasons we left that, that cult. It was one of the few reasons. But my dad took part in an exorcism oh. and they didn't make sure the person was a Christian after and they just left them, and my dad got in a fight with the pastor because they didn't make sure the guy was a Christian, and now the demons <laughs> are going to come back seven times. 
So it wasn't like they. It wasn't like my family saw the logic in it. It was. They doubled down. Yeah. <laughs> that's. That's hilarious. Yeah. There was other things too, like they said that my dad's arthritis was an addiction. Um. Because he wanted to be healed, and he believed he was going to be healed, but then he wasn't, and he wasn't going to lie about being healed because he really believed it was going to happen. Like they just wanted him to like claim it, name it, say you're healed. Because if you say you're healed, then it will happen. Right. But my dad wasn't about that. He was like really believed he was going to be healed, so he wasn't going to lie and say he was healed when he wasn't. He didn't. Man, too honest. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and that, and they're sending more demons our mm. way. Have they shown up yet? Uh, Those demons? Probably. Hmm. Yeah. Let's hope. Let's hope. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. Fingers crossed. You know what that is? You know why you cross your finger? You know what the history of that is? Uh, no, I don't. It makes a little cross. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Not mine. My no. fingers don't bend that way. That's true. Mine do. My big dumb fingies don't no. move that. I'm too stumpy. No, no I'm uh, I'm one of those like, freak, oh. freakazoids. Not me. Yeah. But uh, any other thoughts on exorcisms? Um, yeah, sounds like a bunch of bogus horse patooey to me. Sounds like it. Horse hockey. Horse hockey. Do the horses play hockey? They should. I mean, they play polo. Why not hockey? That's true. Only time will Same tell. thing, just one on ice. I wouldn't mm. mind seeing a horse on ice skates. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. It'd be pretty good. It might go a little something like this. Should we thank our patrons? Yeah, let's thank them. Oh my God! Wow! Thank you so much! Oh, oh thank you! Oh, thank you! Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much! Hey, everybody, and welcome to our Bible study. We're going to cast out some demons today. That's right, in the spookiest of seasons, to get rid of the demons from your body, from your mind, from your heart, we have to cast them out mm-hmm. with a, a bit of a study sesh, because what better way to get rid of a demon than by reading? Aye, man, we're going to read the story about when Jesus put the demons in the pigs. Yes, and the story where, where uh, Jesus uh, killed Dumbledore. With Trinity from the Matrix. That's right, that's right. I forgot about that part. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's been a while since I've read it. <laughs> well, uh, that's why we're studying it. We got to get back into it. Amen. You know, they have Oprah's book club. Why don't we have Bible book club? Yes. Amen. And that's every week, every Wednesday evening, we're studying mm-hmm. this, this holy, mm-hmm. holy of mm-hmm. books. And mm-hmm. uh, my favorite Bible story is probably when it turned out it was the sled. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh Rosebud. Yes. Was it Rosebud? Fuck. Oh, now I have to watch it again. Now I now I'm confused again. I've never watched. I it. thought I, that, I thought that Orson Welles was the sled. <laughs> oh, maybe he was. Yeah, and he was just looking at a picture of himself in the mirror. Right. Or he wanted a box of Rosebud chocolates. Oh, those are good. Actually, they're not. But... They're not. Good. <laughs> they're not good. <laughs> I haven't seen them in years. No, me neither. And I think I know why. Yeah, I think so. Also, they're owned by Nestle, who is evil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> should, should we cast out some demons out of our <laughs> patrons? Yes, let's cast out some patron demons. So let us cast out them. Cast them out. Cast them far away. Cast them into the middle of the ocean, please, for, mm. for our friends, uh, Jakey and Jaybird. And, of course, insert creative name here. Be gone, now, demon. Now, I don't know if I'm supposed to read insert creative name here or if I'm supposed to come up with one. Oh, yeah. Maybe both. Uh, maybe both. Uh, Steve. Mm, that's creative. Mm-hmm. And I just, I would like to cast out the demon out of Kaylee, the mm-hmm. demon of uh, being oh. really cool, being a really cool person. <laughs> I cast thee and I send thee back to cool hell where you belong. Wait. So you're making them not cool? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know, the godly people aren't cool. Oh, right. True. You've seen our music Bible videos. St- <laughs> yeah. Welcome, welcome to Bible study. Where yeah. We're not cool. Yeah. Cool is for fools Fool's and for fools. the devil. Mm-hmm. And the devil. The devil is a fool. Devil's a fool. So be gone, demon of being the really cool person at the party. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, Felicia, the devil. The devil. 
Well, the thank you, be. Kaylee. Thank you, all of you. And um, thank you. Should we do some Christian rock lyrics? Let's rock to these lyrics of uh, Christian persuasion. Can't you see you're not making Christianity better? You're just making rock and roll worse. Okay, so this song is by a band called uh, Seven, the number seven, Eventh Time Down. Seven Eventh Time Down? Is it seventh or is it seven eventh? It's supposed to be seventh time down. It looks like it says seven eventh. But it looks, they spell it seven eventh because they saw. Seven eventh is really funny. (laughs) <laughs> so I don't know a lot, and you could probably tell by the audio quality, but I don't know a lot about sound mixing. Mm. And But apparently, s- professional sound mixers know that there's a specific way that Christian rock likes to be recorded okay. to make it not sound as good as regular rock. <laughs> there's just a way that like when a Christian band's in there, like, oh, we like this sound. It's like, okay. And it's like universal across Christian bands. I feel like this is kind of like, you know, when you see like, Canadian TV, you can always kind of tell that yeah, it's, it's there's, Canadian. There's a different produced content. To it. There's something just different about it. Yeah, like, I don't know what it is, but once you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so there's and and that definitely applies to these because I don't know what it is about the recording, but there's something there that it's mm-hmm. like this is a Christian band. Uh, but here's the lyrics to their song "Undefeated." Undefeated. I know that look in your eyes because I've seen it in the mirror far too many times. I know the way that you fight, but there's freedom waiting here on the other side. When it feels like you're going to loose, uh, I'll be right there reminding you. I'm sure that's loose. Um, we have power that overcame the darkness. The blood of Jesus is rushing through our veins. We stand up upon his words. We are more than conquerors. Every enemy will tremble in his name. He's undefeated. The battle's already won. All you have to do is trust the one who overcomes. When it feels like you're going to lose, just remember who fights for you. No weapon formed against us could ever defeat us. Ever defeat us. I mean... The first verse, I feel like, is like ninety percent of the songs that we've heard. Yeah, they all—they're all the same. It's just yeah. like, I know what you look like. I was there once, loser, mm-hmm. and then I believed in God, and now He's a bloody warrior for me. <laughs> what? <laughs> yep. It's either you're a fucking loser because I was there too, but you can be better. Yeah. Or it's I love God. I'm not a loser because I'm kissing his ass. Yep. And exactly. he's cool. And you're like, I don't know. It's just, ah. Yeah. Worship music's weird. It is. It really is. I don't it, like it. Yeah. Nope. Me neither. It's too desperate. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Well, folks, don't be desperate. Don't be desperate. Cast out your demons. Cast them out. And enjoy this spooky time of year. Spooked. <laughs> spooked. I said spooked. Oh, okay. Work, 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 Sky Moon. <laughs> this podcast has been brought to you by the Sonar Network. 